Hey everybody, David here, and uh, yes, today is my superhero uh, TV uh, show where I talk about all the superhero TV shows that I watch, uh, which you know include DC, Marvel. Uh, if there's any non-DC Marvel TV shows uh, that I'm not aware of right now, uh, maybe I'll check those out. Uh, right now, the most I'm watching is the Marvel Netflix stuff, which obviously come once in a while. And then, of course, the Arrowverse, uh, a lot of the DC stuff, because I watch Gotham and Krypton as well, that are not, not part of the Arrowverse. Uh, but yeah, uh, if you're wondering about Titans, I want to watch Titans badly. But currently, Titans is uh, not out yet on Netflix, so I am not able to watch it yet because I live in Canada, and in Canada, we have to wait till December, apparently. That's when uh, Titans will finally be released on Netflix here. So um, until then, hey, I got the Arrowverse to talk about, so why not? And uh, Flash and Black Lightning did not air uh, this week. Uh, but we do have Supergirl, we have Legends of Tomorrow, and we have Arrow. Uh, so let's get right into this. Supergirl, let's start off with Supergirl. Uh, the episode was Season 4, Episode 4. Uh, M Msa? Imsa? 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 I don't know. Uh, whatever the title was, uh, we got an all-new Supergirl, where Supergirl finally wakes up from her coma, uh, Brainiac and Lena are working together. I actually just rewatched this episode right now because it, it was totally drawing a blank on me. I didn't hate the episode. I just, for some reason, wasn't remembering what happened in the episode. I watched it, you know, back in on Monday, um, and you couldn't remember for the life of me. One of the things I should have remembered is the character of Manchester Black, who made an appearance in... Uh, this episode, uh, who looks like he's going to be staying for a while, which I'm really excited about because I'm very familiar with uh, Manchester Black. Not too much of the comics, but I know he made uh, an appearance in that animated direct-to-video, uh, Superman vs. the Elite, which is actually one of my favorite Superman animated uh, movies. George Newbern uh, did the voice of Superman in that one. And yeah, Manchester Black was one of the main villains in that in that video, and I, I'm guessing they're setting him up to be one of the bads of this season. And I say one of the bads because it looks like we have a couple of bad guys, multiple bad guys going on in this season. We got Otis and Mercy, who we know that they're going to eventually bring Lex Luthor into all of this uh, at some point in the season because they announced that Lex will be making a, an appearance. Uh, we do know that... The, um, the the character Sam Witwer is playing, whose character name is escaping me right now. He's he's a villain of this season, and then of course now Manchester Black, and and then we have the whole Soviet thing going on with the Russian Supergirl clone, I guess. Uh, so there's a lot here, a lot of villains here that are playing in in the game, and we don't know when. Some of them will finally make their attack because if at the end of the episode we we saw the the Russian Supergirl clone, I guess, um, and we don't know what they're waiting for. Apparently, she's still training, maybe for her big battle with Supergirl later on in the season. We'll see, but clearly, there's a lot of cards here on the table, and I'm actually liking it. I think it it brings uh, something different. You know, it's it's not like Here's the villain of the season, and we're only going to deal with this villain. This is now like, no, we got multiple situations going on here, and Supergirl is going to have to deal with all of them, maybe one at a time. Maybe they're all going to collide at some point. It's going to be interesting. And uh, seeing Manchester Black in this this uh, episode was really cool, uh, clearly setting him up as well to be a villain in this season um i'm curious to see if they'll make his storyline similar to that of of the animated film that i saw i i'm not too familiar with the comic book version of that character uh but i'm gonna guess he lost his sister in a similar way that the animated movie and uh this episode did so we'll see 
I'm I'm I like this episode today, uh, this week of Supergirl. I thought it was uh, it, it gave us some really nice dynamic between Lena and Brainiac. Um, last season I didn't care too much for Brainiac Five. I thought he was a little annoying, but this season I'm I'm liking him uh, quite a bit. I like that scene where he was even he had a little teardrop uh, a, a little bit. Uh, I'm not too sure about the president angle this season because the president, last time we saw this new president after Linda Carter got taken out uh, because she was outed as an alien, this new president came in and he seemed kind of nice at first, right? And I said, okay, they're not going to go with doing a, like a Donald Trump bad president kind of thing. Uh, but it looks like they are because the president was an asshole in this in this episode and it got me thinking again, man, they're, they're going to do something with this president that's very Donald Trump-like later this season, aren't they? Because there was one uh, point where he was telling off Alex, and he was going to say something to her, but I guess the assistant stopped him from whatever he was about to say. And it makes me wonder how far he was going to go out and say whatever was on his mind and i think that's going to be something we're going to see later on in the season too maybe we might have to see supergirl go against the government um yeah uh, like i said in previous videos supergirl better be careful with the politics uh because you can anger some people that might not agree with your political views so we'll see on that uh, moving on, Legends of Tomorrow, Season 4, Episode 3, Dancing Queen, Legends, I love, love, love Legends. Um, they were dealing with a situation where um, the Legends went to the 70s, I think it was 1977, it's been a while since I saw Legends this week as well, you know, last time the episode aired on Tuesday, I watched it Wednesday, Um yeah, I, I really had fun with this episode. Probably my least favorite so far, but still a worthy episode of this season. This All the DC TV shows have been on a roll for me this year. And Legends is definitely no exception. One, I love the characters in this. I like seeing Nate, what he's doing. And of course, how they set up the whole Amaya thing at the end. I don't think this is their way of bringing Amaya back, but it is a fun storyline to watch and see where they're going to go uh, with her character. Or not really her character, but a character that looks like her. Um, because if you saw the way it ended, it ended with the character being stuck in that form, thanks to Constantine. I did roll my eyes a little bit because it's like... You guys, you you writers, that was too easy. That was too easy for you to bring her back. Because why as her? Why can one of the legends say, wait, 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 let her transform back to her regular self first. We can't bring her on the ship looking like our old friend. Uh, because, yeah, that, that that's messed up. Uh, especially for one of the characters who had a romantic love interest in that character that looked like that. So... Um, it's going to be fun to see when Nate finally comes back on board and sees Amaya or a character that looks like Amaya on the ship. Um, we got some Gary in this episode, didn't we? Gary and Nate were, were having their own little thing going on in this episode, which I thought was cool. I might be wrong on that, but someone confirm. I, I did like a lot of that stuff going on. Um... Anything else I want to add in this episode? By the way, all this week, I noticed all the Bebo stuff, which is great. You can never get enough Bebo. And I know the, the creators of Be Legends of Tomorrow uh, want Bebo merchandise out there running around. I don't know if that will work. Uh, because I mean, I'm, I don't know. It depends on how much Legends of Tomorrow merchandise sells. If Legends of Tomorrow merchandise sells well... That I say Warner Brothers and DC should go for it and create Bebo merchandise. Uh, I'll, I'll tell you this. I'm not going to buy Bebo merchandise because I don't buy plushies anymore unless it's for my dog to, like, uh, fight. Uh, other than that, look. Yeah, Legends was fun. I'm loving this Mick versus Constantine stuff going on. I love their back and forth. 
that could be my new favorite bromance, even though it's not a bromance, it's a hate mance. Uh, but yeah, I'm loving, I'm loving that stuff. Finally, moving on to Arrow season seven, episode four, level two. Oliver is getting tortured. What the fuck? Um, yeah, this, I, I really love Arrow. Um, Arrow's been my favorite of all the DC TV shows. Uh, there could have been a time where Flash could have overshadowed it, and that was during season one of Flash, because season one of Flash, I will still stay, say that it, it is the best single season of a superhero TV show, but I think Arrow has had more seasons that I've enjoyed over Flash. I still love Flash, but if I'm going to pick between Arrow and Flash, it's going to be Arrow, because I think... Arrow dropped the ball in season four, but it's been picking itself up since. Um, and half of three, I'm not going to hate the show because half of a season was bad uh, when half of a season was good. Uh, well, season five and six have put me back on track with Arrow. So I love season seven so far. All this prison stuff that's going on, I feel like the show is back focused on Oliver the way it should be and I hope they keep it that way I like that Felicity is in a supporting role you know I, I hate it when superhero tv shows have the love interest going against the hero because that doesn't make them feel like a supporting characters which is what they should be uh, they feel like a villain if they go against the hero we want to see our supporting characters support the hero and that's what Felicity is doing her little side uh, missions. Um, I did like Dinah's and and Renee's storyline in this season. I mean, in this episode with them going after this vigilante Green Arrow. Uh, I don't know who it is, but my guesses have been Roy. I think Roy is this vigilante Green Arrow wannabe. Even though he looks a little bit too small to be... Roy, I don't think, I hope it's not William. If it's William, I'm done. Um, I won't be done, but I, I'll be disappointed with where the show is going. Um, for me, it would have to be Roy. Roy is the most logical character that I think that could take it up. Can you imagine if it's uh, Zoe, Renee's daughter? Uh, that would be weird. Uh, but considering he's not suited up in the future... Um, I'm going to guess it's not. Speaking of Zoe in the future, uh, she's a black canary in the future. What? I am loving these flash forwards. I think these flash forwards are so much fun since the, the flashbacks in the early seasons. Uh, I am digging what we're learning in each episode as each episode goes on. And the Zoe being the black canary, I'm like, duh. Um, so Roy is helping them look for Felicity, and they drop a huge bombshell on us. Felicity is dead. Or, or at least they're making us think she's dead. Some people I know don't think she's dead, and maybe that's just them trying to trick us, and we'll find out later that she's actually still alive and maybe hidden. I think she's actually dead, and they're actually setting this up for what's to come in the present day. I, I think it's going to be a long time since Oliver... And Felicity see William. And William hasn't seen them since he last left. Uh, so yeah, I don't think I don't think uh kid William is gonna show up on Arrow ever again. Uh we don't have an exact uh time frame on when these flash forwards take place, but I am going to presume it takes place ten years into the future. Um because they they all don't look that old. They ten years older, I can see them pulling that off. Twenty years older, mm, they're gonna need a lot more makeup than what they have. So especially Dinah. Dinah looked like she was still either she had Botox on in the future or some something's going on in the twenty years from now. So I'm gonna say it's ten years into the future. That's my theory. I don't think they said that yet. But uh, yeah, that's my guess, and um, I'm I'm very invested in that the future uh, stuff going on the flash forwards. I think that's really cool. I really did like the stuff with Oliver um, thinking. What would he do if he was in his dad's position? Would he shoot himself, just like uh, 
uh, his father did to protect, to save him and right the wrongs of his uh, past, of his father's past. Uh, I did like that, seeing that alternate version of what Oliver would do. He would do the exact same. And I think most parents would. No parent wants to see their son or their children die first. And I think any parent would take their lives in order to allow their um, kids to go on surviving. Um, So I actually did find that stuff really interesting. Um, And it looks like that's not going to stop in the next episode. So, yeah. Uh, With that being said, guys, this has been a great week of DC TV. I'm I'm very happy this season overall so far. Uh, We're like four episodes in into Supergirl and and Arrow and three episodes into Legends. I think Black Lightning and and Flash are also four episodes in. They just took a week off. They would have been on episode five this week if both of them were here. Uh, But they're not. They should be back next week. They were off this week, I believe, because of the elections that were going on in the States. So that's fine. I can't wait to have them back because, yeah, it's, it's been great so far. Uh, four episodes into all the shows and yeah i'm loving it so with that being said guys comment below and tell me your thoughts on this week's episodes of supergirl legends and arrow and uh, until next time everybody take care